Okay, I'm going to explain something. Um, I'm going to explain the relationship, the fundamental relationship between a people, people, uh, and government, the government they create, or government. This is like the cornerstone of um, of the world, of humanity, of civilization. People, before they have country, before they have government, just imagine that they're running around, tribes, clans, which is the same actually. Actually, uh, if you understand the, the tribal order, the relationship between government, established authority by the people, and the people who invent or create or designate their government is the same. And it is a little tricky to understand. What happens is, people decide humanity becomes complicated, there's not enough time to get back and communicate things, and people start doing things, there needs to be um, an established rule. This is a reason uh, government appears, government exists. First, obviously, we would like to not be told and not have anybody tell us what to do. This is the first primary, basic, primitive um, desire of, 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 of the pure soul. But we want to have family, we want to have collective, we want to have things work and, and happen in society. So we start listening to their leadership, we start seeing who's the one that knows how to do it, and we actually are naturally inclined to want to learn, to, to learn things that we don't know. In any case, so what happens is, eventually, there's too many people in the valley, let's say, and they uh, take too long. Literally, it's a question of how long it takes to communicate. This is why we start saying we need something written down. We need something to see how it is done, a schedule, uh, rules and laws and so forth. This is what where government starts, where we start organizing society. It's not to defend ourselves from enemies. It's not to fight. It's not to be able to survive. It's because we need order. This is where government arises. So, in any case, the fundamental relationship is that people decide, elaborate uh, philosophy of, of how to administrate, how to run things. In any case, they build the government. They design it, they build a structure, they, they decide how they're going to be leaders, how, who's going to run it, and all this. And what happens is people take this apparatus and put it up there and they say we're going to listen to that okay you guys we're all going to follow that so there's that's the first um, perspective of relationship first you look we say we're going to listen to that everybody agrees yes we all agree we're all gonna listen to that that we constructed and put ourselves inside of government is like something that we design uh, I don't want to say a cage, you know, it all depends, it all depends <laughs> how, how good your design is, but in any case, we subject ourselves to go by it, to obey it, to listen to it, to reference it also. These are words that could describe how, uh, how fantastical we may become one day about designing a government that is effortless, that fits like a glove, that it's, it, it, it could not have been designed better by Mother Nature. You know, someday we'll get there. We won't have people in prison. We'll know perfectly how how the human mind, the society works, and how redemption, how to get people to want to not hurt uh, themselves or society. You know, in any case, what is important right now is to understand uh, this three-dimensional relationship because people uh, in the Falcon Malvinas they keep saying it's the islanders. It's the islanders wish it. It's the islanders wish it. It's the islanders wish it. And they don't understand this basic construct of government and people so as to be able to have some eloquence, some discourse. Nobody's actually talking in these groups. They're just 
fighting and, and knocking the other one down and shut up. It, it is this. It is what I tell you. And that's it. Nobody's actually talking like intelligent people who are interested in, in politics, who go to university and talk about, well, you know, the different philosophies would fit, this would work, it, you know, it's designed this way, but then it is done for this reason or that reason. Nobody has intelligent conversations in these groups. They all just want to be right, okay? So in order to break out of this, we have to understand how um, the, 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 the primary fundamental relationship between people and government so that we can later understand why is it that still the islanders do not have the right to shut up Argentina and tell it to not complain about what happened with England in 1833? It needs to just obey the islanders. This is actually the message of, of self-determination. It's only, I mean, you actually look at the phrases that some of these people say, you can't believe it. The only thing that matters are the islanders' wishes. Think about that sentence in English. The only thing that matters are the islanders' wishes, as if they were god fairies that go around the world saying, okay, I think we'll, we'll move to Antarctica now. And, you know, what does that mean? What does that mean, the only thing that matters are the islanders' wishes? In a world where countries are trying to get along and it's difficult and they're all up against each other, it's hard and with, with, with difficult and complicated rules and they don't want to understand each other. Oh, among, amidst this, it's the islanders' wishes. It's, we'll shut up this whole thing and we can all throw it out the window because the islanders' wishes is, is so ridiculous. When you think, I can't believe when I read this, I can hear the, the voices saying it. And in any case, I'll explain why in a logical sense so that we can make sense of it. So when people put themselves in, a, in, a, in the structure that they designed as government, they decide, they, they uh, commit to following it, to going by those uh, by what the, the government they have designed. However, we have means, well, this is, this is what happens. It can, wait, I got lost. Let me pause it for a second. Okay, I'll just finish explaining how the working of government, and then I'll go back to the, the situation with Britain, Argentina, and the Falklanders. So, since... This, the, the problem with government is that human nature, our essence, our, our pure soul, our pure human naturalness wants to be, wants to be free. We don't want to, we don't want, we had to resort to making a government, but we always, the, and it's, this is not about capricious desire, you know, we want to be free, we want to do whatever we want. No, it's not like that. It is the best, the optimal, the healthy to be free, to be with one with nature. And it's good that we're, we're pulled in that direction, that we prefer that. Um, so what happens is, um, eventually we want, we will, the, the body, the mind, the heart, the soul starts feeling, starts progressing. Humanity progresses because of the, the living reality moves in an organic sense goes forward and written reality which is what we fix in letters and objects stays like on a conveyor belt that moves back and, and doesn't change and but we any, any case so eventually we progress and we start becoming uncomfortable with this hard structure that we made around us so since we know this, we know that problems have arisen. Maybe we don't understand. It was Mother Nature saying, "Don't enclose me." Um, we have always had ways of of, of changing government, and intuitively, we just worked into our government's ways in which we we vote, we we can incorporate. Ideally, a more modern government would incorporate immediately into our institutions what we discover and learn that we didn't know before, so as to change everything that's rigid and continue to change it but in any case in one way or another we we left this door open so we have representation we have congress we have senates we have voting we have things that that make it possible to continue to move inside this uh structure so that's how we solved it which leads us to the problems that we have with all governments and how a government 
could actually be organic, but let's stay with the problem in, in the islands. The problem in the islands is that there is only one basic relationship, country and people. There are variants, variations, associated states, unions, but they all basically have the same building uh, elements, the si that, that sole building element, the relationship of people and their country. Um, this goes to why having extra national territories like colonies or or other territories besides your country is um, is unfair to the whole populace of the planet as a whole who where everybody just has their country the people and their country and in in the sense of representing yourselves before the forum of discussions and arguments each country representing their people and you have some pe some countries that say yeah we represent ourselves but we also represent you know, and this gives an advantage in the in the context of time that would uh, refer to negotiating and working out diplomacy. And but that's another subject also. As far as the uh, Malvinas goes, um, Britain is already a people's country, an empire. Let's just speak of Britain of England, then. Uh, and Argentina is already just starting a baby country, barely, you know, fledgling, uh, has its, uh, it's obvious that Buenos Aires is going to be, is, well, now, by this time, it's already the capital of, of the Union, uh, the provinces united, the United Provinces, and so <coughs> they have a problem with, with uh, being clear about what's going to happen with those islands. So in any case, the British come. They don't accept the Argentinians being there, and they want to. Have, they they see they can have the whole archipelago, and nobody will do anything about it. And so they go ahead and make their move. Um, no, the islands were not held by Britain. The islands had never not been argued over. So that means. Ownership, ruling, uh, sovereignty, settlement, whatever you want to call it, was never consolidated. It was never integrally consolidated. The only time the English integrally consolidated their rule of the islands was after they kicked off the Argentinians. Before that, they were arguing with the Spanish and they moved it. If it had been them, I think they would have tried a little harder to uh, do something about the Spanish taking their islands away, right? They didn't. They yielded to, in any case. Another argument that just continues on and on and on, and they don't, they, they pretend that that doesn't make sense, although they're feeling it intuitively, they, they want to push this, this explanation that they have to repeat. Oh my God. Um, and so the conflict starts, and it's kind of let, because the Argentinians cannot handle, they cannot handle fighting the English, for Christ's sakes. Uh, an empire with cannons and, and tons of gold for uh, uh, investing in, 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 in military, you know. The, the Argentinians say, what can we do? We've got to think about ourselves. So they leave it at a very quiet, very quiet, and diplomatic, sort of, the, you know, it's... A, put in the government and says, yes, we know this happened, and it happened, and so every once in a while a president picks it up again and says, you know, and we want to talk about this. And of course the English, the English say, we don't, look at them, they're nothing, we don't have to talk to them, you know, that's basically, that was British policy, that was their, uh, their strategy for keeping the Falklands, keep the Argentinians away, shut them up, don't respond to them when they, they you know, just ignore it, just... Treat it like they've always been ours, you know. And they won't know what to say to that. Let's just act like, you know, like we know what we're talking about. And the Argentinians are always in the same situation. They have problems they need to get. This goes on for 150 years, the war. So now all of a sudden, now I'm not saying it's new, because already the, the British are seeing that 
their other territorial situation, this territorial situation, which basically it is a colony. Um, it's very light, a very light kind of... The point is that the intention of the islanders being there was created and it came from the islanders being on the islands came from England they needed people on the islands these weren't islands that the world was looking at and then people said hey you know look we're becoming a home we have a relationship with England we have a relationship with Argentina we have a relationship with China we have a relationship with Brazil with America look you know look at what we're doing look at what we're doing that wasn't the case they were subjects of the Queen. They were there for England. They don't. They they don't want to say that, right? Okay. So then, in any case, I'm going to pause again. So then the British that are, have immediately understood the principle of establishing people, which is the same thing Israel does in, in Palestine, to give a quick example. You put people there and you make country happen, you know, and there will be our people. So, you know, get the ball all the way down to the end of the field and they will have our name on it, right? Um, except, you know, nothing it's it's the Falklands I mean I, I've never been there but I have I have a pretty good idea of, of how motivated you might be about building a country there if you live there you have a the life that is can comes out of uh, that the place inspires you to have um, so and the English also understand that these islands it's it's almost like um, there's all these forces the Argentinians will either spill over and occupy so it's all about keeping the Argentinians off them make a place where no immigrants come you know very few people very little contact with the outside you know keep the Argentinians away but we don't want to say that because we want to appear that, that yourself you know it's all so corrupt it's also about keeping the islands from Argentina and that's we're not saying it though we're not going to say that. The, the whole reason this, this conflict exists is, is because we want to keep the islands from Argentina. And so we're fighting. We want to keep the islands from Argentina and they want, they want them back or they want to have them. You know, why don't they just call it what it is? <laughs> you know, and they're making all this, what sounds good, what sounds good. You know, people's right, self-determination. This sounds good, it sounds good. What we all want to hear are the righteous reasons why we're doing everything we're doing to the world. These explanations that, that, that say, you know, we're doing it for these reasons that sound good to the ears of people so they won't condemn us, so they, nobody will think that we're doing anything wrong. You know, this is humanity, you yeah? know? This is humanity. Anyways, modern day, modern day uh, history. So, were, were the islands, and I'm going to say this, the Argentinians are not going to like it, but it's, this is what's going on, basically. This is what, not what's going on, but what, this is how things would be if they were true even to the, the strategy they are trying to use. If the islands truly cap islanders truly capitalized on their right, their sovereign right to be there, which is real in the sense of the natural humanity that that uh, of of them uh, of of these people, and that we all have a right to fall asleep where we're standing and wake up there and start cooking. And, and make love and, and take pictures of our surroundings and it is that's our sovereign right there's nothing that is it that's the source where we decide to plant our food and have our children and, and that's it okay so they have that they have that and nobody can take that away from them whether they were put there as a human shield or in the worst way that that one could say it uh, it doesn't matter they have that 
for however they got there, they have it. So if they wanted to really capitalize on that as a strength, they would stand up as a sovereign people. A sovereign people, in the context of uh, describing how what I was describing, the only true element that makes civilization and the relationships between nations are the relationship of the people to their country, they would stand and say, okay, England there, Argentina there, Brazil there, you know, China there, Antarctica there, Spain over there, Italy over there. They would stand and say, okay, let's look at this. This is what Britain did to Argentina. This is what Argentina did to Britain. And they would stand there as a sober, sovereign mind and would be objective about it. And they could lead forward their uh, immovable place. Instead, they're all caught up with this. Uh, no, we want whatever when Britain says, and that's our whim, that's our wish. We we will. We, they're all crazy. Nobody is 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 talking intelligently through the simplicity of what this is really. One of the reasons is that. It would become more difficult if they took the proper course because then the Argentinians would say well they were there they were they, they were getting beat up they couldn't get it together but they were the, the islands they, they, they wrote it in a piece of paper in Buenos Aires you know we're, we're we're taking over from the Spanish and we're sending a governor they kill him and then the Americans come and beat us up and you know but they were there so there would be that that would have to be talked and included. Oh, God forbid this becomes difficult. All of a sudden we have to talk about, let's see how much proportion is appropriate to the Argentine historical claim to the islands. Oh, God forbid we work too hard. And then you look at what is appropriate being that this was England, a country that really just wanted to use these islands. They weren't here to, you know, uh, build, make a, a, a little England for real. You know, now that they, they think they're not, you're not going to have a little England by putting a telephone booth and uh, maybe a tour bus painted red. Okay, they, they just really needed these islands. As a, it, it's obvious. It's obvious. The only big, the big investment, a huge military base. That's it. No desalinization plant, nothing that would say, okay, because of these people wanting to live there. No, no, oh, that's the, that, that was a big English move, a military base. In any case, so we look at um, what their purpose, the British Empire, England, for these islands is, what the Argentinian purpose, what their desire for these islands were, and as an islander, I can start sovereign. I can start sovereignly talking about where do we go, because I'm staying here. I'm not going anywhere. But you know, Argentina's right there. You know, England's all the way there, and all they really wanted was to use this place all the time. And then they they beat up their friend that loved that that admired them, and they just when they had a a a, a genocidal horrible thing where they tortured their own people my mother country goes and, and and just always only caring about keeping these islands has a it brings a war to the to these islands and to the history of that country i mean if you start looking what did argentina do to england if you look from the objective islander perspective the story is very different of the world of the world it is a very different story, but it is true sovereignty. It is really you're saying what it is from where you're standing, and you create your own nation, and what will come forth will be truly self-determined, sovereign, genuine, integral territory of a people that made the made truth out of the objective history that was about their islands you know it's a very simple concept it's a very simple concept and I don't understand what I don't understand is why 
we don't hear, I don't hear, I'm sure they're there somewhere, they're not on the internet, they're probably at home right now hanging out with their friends. Don't get more excited about taking those ropes, about taking that lead. I don't, I don't understand why all you see on the internet is this, this stupid, childish, racist, horrible thing. You are, you are, you guys have always ugly, ugly, ugly. Nobody's talking about what a beautiful thing for a new nation to be born in the South Atlantic out of reconciliation and out of the awakening of a people. What, you know, can, any, can somebody get excited about this? Please. Because really, this has been a horrible waste of time for five years. A, a total waste of wonderful technology. To, uh, doing nothing. Uh, arguing and trying to sound smarter than the other. You know? Ugh. Good luck. Oh, I just realized, I'm glad I paused it. I just realized I, I don't, I didn't deliver the, the point that uh, was pertinent to the argument I was just having in the uh, British and American politics group. Um, therefore, if the I actually I explained it it's inside what I just said you can't decide for a government what to do for a, people cannot decide for a government what to do about people it doesn't once you create government and you commit to letting it guide you we design the means by which to, to steer it, to change things as we change our perspectives. We can't just say, okay, government, shut up. You know, I know I made, I made you uh, to be respected and, and uh, honored and your institutions are to guide and, and, and rule us by agreement and we made ways of, 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 of stopping when you get out of hand, supposedly, which doesn't really happen because governmental institutions abuse people. But um, the notion is that we have this relationship, with, and I call it three-dimensional, because government is an apparatus that we design, and then we go inside of it with commitment. And so, in this case, the people of Argentina, the people of the Falklands, the people of Britain, are all in the same category. They're all people. And they all have to honor government. The way, uh, the logic in this, uh, it's, it's, it's our wishes is the only thing that matters. The, the, the Islanders' wishes are the only thing that matters. Is actually saying, whatever we say, whatever we want, is Argentina has got to do it or any other country, or for that matter, England. Because there are, there's only two categories and in fact what I've heard is this this is almost uh, pushing to you it's like saying your your bullshit is forcing you to explain it a little better because otherwise it's not gonna fly so what I hear our pe our, our, our English people say yes in fact we have to take our hands out we can't do anything about it if they don't want it we can't force them to you know and so there's this whole which is why I have the three cups in my group which is a, it is a, it's a mis misleading trick. You can't have two bosses at once. You can't have, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's silly. It's a whole thing. I don't know if it's intentional, uh, a way of, of tricking people, okay, can distracting them, making them take their concentration somewhere. In the meantime, you move the cup in the other direction, you know, or it's just overly intelligent, uh, British uh, politicians who ended up making ways that end up wrapping around our neck. But in, essentially, you can't, um, you know, if the islanders want a political reality for themselves, they would have to then start doing stuff, passing laws or asking Britain to uh, resolve the conflict with Argentina. They can't say, Argentina, shut up. Uh, forget London, forget England, you know. 
you just shut up. You, you, you have no right to protest a sovereign dispute. You have no diplomatic rights in this world. You can't. It, it, it has absolutely no sense. I know I'm, I'm, I'm kind of missing the mark, but I'm, uh, at the same time, I'm saying it in three or four different ways. You have to understand that. You have to understand that this logic that is being used uh, to, as a defense does not make the full circle. It doesn't, it doesn't work out. It doesn't balance out at the end. A people cannot decide for a country whether uh, to have or not have or shut up about a, a dispute or about a, a trade um, a trade requirement they want to have with another country. Whatever it is, they can't say, well, the islands don't want you to do that. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you have to see this. I don't know how else to say it. <laughs> so, but there is a proper means, a proper way, a proper mechanism that would would be effectuated by, and it does have to do with first things first. The, this, the problem of 1833 that Britain had with Argentina has to be addressed and resolved between these two countries. Once they do that, and they decide on a percentage, proportions, quality, definitions of right, we have this, this, and this right, whatever it is, however the defining uh, agreement of understanding, uh, of resolving understanding in this conflict is, it would allow for later, okay, you know, now that you guys finally are talking and are deciding more or less that Argentina was, had so in so much right and and, and had, was right about these, these and those things and Britain had these and these rights and was right about this other thing, we can start talking about us. You know, well, therefore, since we actually want this or that, you know, whatever happens, <laughs> whatever happens at that point, basically, uh, there's too much hypocrisy, too many contradictions. Uh, I don't understand a, a country that is, that just came out, that was warred on abusively when it was not trained, it had no weapons, and it's soldiers in fear and panic were killed uh, by a country that, you know, <sighs> planned everything to the last second, you know, and stocked up and had doubles, doubled up systems just in case. And people were mentally trained to, to go kill and, you know, what war is all about. I don't understand how a country that went through that can then just turn around and say, Oh, well, okay, let's do business as usual, which is always what the British want to do. It's just, you know, no matter what happened, you know, let's, let's have relationships. Let's have good relationships again. It's that way, we, you know, we can come around again. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, um, I don't get that. So, there's too many contradictions. I feel that once things are real and... and where they're supposed to be and are speaking of a singular well-founded human moral truth about things well things will have to be decided upon but you know i think a, a better world needs work needs also tough decisions and if the islanders recognize okay so argentina was here but you know what we don't want to relate to them we don't want to do businesses when we don't want their fruits, we don't want their airplanes, we don't want nothing. And yes, we acknowledge that that they were here and they had uh, so they had done so much and they had this from the Spanish and they they made good on whatever and we recognize all of that. We were luckily to us <laughs> brought here by the British, elbowed them out of the way. Now we are here and we don't want to have anything to do with them that reality would have to have form. It would mean, to make, uh, to make it short and sweet, it would mean that England should stop being so involved with Argentina and stop acting or let go of the islands. Let go of the islands if it wants to have a good relationship with Argentina. You can't have 
both you can't have all three things this is the thing about this thing is well we're all commonwealth and we also have territories and all of this and this and that no no a people and their government a people and their government let's make a simple world that can start resolving uh, disputes, conflicts, misunderstandings, conflicts of, 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 of lies and hypocrisy. Let's get rid of all that and then have clear thinking, people speaking to people through their governments. So if, um, if that were truly aimed for, then the hard reality would be, this is just one example. At the same time, there's a lot of things that the islanders could realize, you know, that would make them realize that maybe they were a little wrong about a lot of things regarding the Argentinians. So a lot of things could happen, but the important thing is that the order is proper. That first, first that gets resolved. Once we've done that, if nobody, if, if you realize that nobody can really move the islanders from the islands, anything can be built above that so I never understood why they're so freaked out why they're so insecure why they're so angry why they're so resentful why they're so insolent why they're so everything why your that is your home and you can only draw strength moral strength from saying you guys we want you to resolve this for us. If I was an islander, I would be pissed at England. I would be saying, you resolve that with Argentina so we can live in, live in peace. You know? I don't know if this last little bit helped. I added 10 more minutes. This is going to take forever now to download. But... Um, I think I'm overkilling the same point. The logic doesn't work. The, the islander's wishes is, is a null point. The principle is understood, but it is misapplied. The, the, the concept is known. The concept of a, a people's right of sovereignty and self-determination, yes, we all have it. It's understood, and we're, we're cherishing it, I guess. We talk a lot about it, but are we? I mean, there's so many countries that, that say we are people, we give them freedom, and blah, 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 really look at how they're being treated in their own country. So I don't know. It's a whole subject. But, you know, that was never the question. The, the thing is, what is that and how is it thought? And it's been thinking, it's been getting thought of wrongly, and it's been getting used to flood a discussion and and not allow for things to get talked about and also it's been adopted by people who fanatically believe these things these things that have been spread by western media these these one liners of of you know they they all sound like they know what they're talking about you know and and they I don't think they're really thinking they're connecting the proper reasoning for each thing that they sustain so fervently. <laughs> you know, a lot of talk, a lot of talk, but uh, really, are, are you thinking? Are you thinking about what you're saying? Is it, is it really applying here, here and there? You know, and if you don't want to listen to people when they want to talk to you, and if you automatically deny before thinking if before seeing if what they're saying makes sense and you your first your intention your primary intention is to negate what the other is saying uh nobody's talking in these groups they're all trying to oppose that's the the prime directive opposing and knocking and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say it's equal i'm sorry i'm not gonna say it's equal there's there's a chip on uh, shoulder here. Maybe too many years of being told you did this to Africa, you did this to Asia, you did this, and in Palestine, it's all your fault, it's all your fault. Maybe the, the British are becoming a culture of people that as soon as they hear, perhaps we messed up or we wronged here, the, the alarms go off inside and they start 
pushing, pushing away. No, 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 no. Something maybe happened in the, in the collective social psyche because it's amazing how absent, completely absent of any dialogue, of any conversation where there are people processing what, the, what they hear the other ones say. <laughs> there's none of that happening. And there's none of that happening. They absolutely are not processing what they hear the other person say. They knock it from the start. That's, that's, what it's, that's all it's been for the last five years. All of these groups. And the funny part is that when I brought the issue to um, an, other groups that were not, that were not talking about the Malvinas Falklands conflict, as soon as the British smelt that, you know, it was an RG talking about the, uh, the same barrage of, of accusations and not listening and not wanting to talk. And it in, in, in immediately enacted, like its own on its own lane, of 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 uh, leaving the whole rest of the group behind and whatever momentum and 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 demeanor and atmosphere was carrying. All of a sudden, it became this thing again, right there between the English and whoever whatever Argentinian presented itself himself there. You know, and and, and then the funny part is that the English say. Oh, it, it's a done deal. There's nothing happening. There's no more issue. There's no more issue. It's done. There's nothing to talk about. <laughs> right. <laughs> there's nothing to talk about. <laughs> you know, they're going insane on the internet. They're tr treating each other like, and there's nothing because there's absolutely nothing to talk. So this is it. And then you know, one can easily start thinking about, you know, why are people so frustrated? in some places of the world, you know, this is going to go someplace else. But you could easily start understanding when you think about human relationships one-on-one -on -one with your friends and how people treat each other, how your, you and your friend treat each other. Certain actions, certain behavior cause certain feelings inside. Certain way of treating someone, a friend of yours causes you to feel a certain way. And um, this kind of political treatment, people re think of being politically treated. A people think of country, and they think of how they officially are treated by that country. So there is a relationship in the, in the mind, in the, in the psyche of every human being. There's a place for how I get along with the people from that country, and there's a mind for how what that country represents is treating me like or what how its government the official the hard part is so there's all of these uh, different levels of of uh, reasoning that each human being has and how your country politically acts or has been known to behave with other countries and you learn about this as you're growing up in the world how so this country and that country has uh, treated other countries, you know, it starts becoming how uh, part of the reason you react to, uh, you know, people don't get passionately angry at England. You know, they don't, they don't, ah, death to America, you know, how they, death to the Americans, you know, how they, they go, they just burn flags, and, you know, they, they get really passionate against America. With the British, they don't. You know, and this makes me think of a, a human feeling. It's it's almost like I'm so angry because you secretly tricked me. It's a different kind of anger. It's not like you used to boast that you were fun and great and da 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 da, da and so now I hate you. Ah, you know, it's different. It's a different anger. The anger towards Britain is different to, than the anger towards America and then you know, the stuff that's going on over there uh, in the Middle East or whatever or was going on because you don't see much. We don't see much flag burning these days. <laughs> Luckily, thank God. <laughs> Anyways, so, you know, I think we just start respecting people and their histories and start making the, you know, treating everybody and their countries like they're valid 
And if you realize you don't know if you can substantiate believing that they're valid, it's because you don't know really much at all about their history, make a point about learning and seeing why they feel the way they do about their history. You know, that's that's good advice. And to get to know uh, countries and people and care about what their perspective is and why rather than treat countries like they're all subjected to you on a on a drawing and you can point at it and each one is a, you know the same criticism more or less you have you know they alternate now this is the bad one and you have a, the whole set of criticisms that go uh, now towards a different country you know and they're, they're the same ones you use for the other one anyways don't get me started <sighs> okay Good luck again.